right, Lab Code Agents, welcome again. Today we've got someone super special, uh, someone that, that I coached with, a brilliant, brilliant mind. I think one of the most uh, brilliant people I've ever spoken to. So blessed to know him. And of course, it's Matthew Ferry. Matthew, thanks for being with us, man. You're, you're an author, you're a pioneer, you're just a, a thinker. And it's really nice to know someone like you. So oh, thank you. Well, I feel the same way about you, Tristan, and I. I have uh, I've been an admirer of yours for a long time. Thanks, bro. That's super yeah. sweet, man. Well, today we're going to get into something a little different. So I, I love that you told me to title this: "Clear Your Mind and Kick Some Ass." Yeah. Because most of the time, you're going to hear how to get more listings, how to go after expireds, how to make better cold calls, past clients, referrals, all this. But it all really starts with, with your mind. And I'm just going to get into it with the question, man. Some okay. people out there, they, they just don't know that, that you have come up with so much cool stuff. Like the drunk monkey, right? Yeah. Who knew that? I was like, when you told me that, I was like, what? No. And that was really your idea. And then the whole idea yep. of coaching as we know it, that was also your idea, which is brilliant. So or, yeah, at least an expression. Yeah. yeah. So where do you see real estate agents need the most help since they're so good at, at identifying these trends and, and connecting with people so well? Well, first of all, let me clear up this thing about uh, coaching. I didn't invent coaching, right? Coaching no. was occurring. But uh, uh, back in 1993, I started doing a three-week-long phone coaching program. And ultimately, my brother and, and father and I all collaborated and came up with what is you know, basically the, the real estate sales coaching industry. And that was you know, good uh, 15, 18 years ago. But you know, back then, I put up that slide of the drunk monkey. You know, the, the drunk monkey is a, is a tool that I created for myself back in 1991. And I was trying to figure out how to, um, how to express or, or get you to understand or get, even get myself to understand this idea of the nonstop talking in my head that that wouldn't shut up, that wouldn't let me do the things that I wanted to do. I mean, Tristan, I wanted to, you know, back then I, I was a sales guy and I wanted to make calls. I wanted to close sales. I wanted to take action. I wanted to exercise. And I had this thing in my head that was constantly distracting me, talking me out of doing what I wanted to do. And it was driving me crazy. And, <laughs> One of my teachers said, oh, it's the monkey mind. And I was like, oh, that's oh, the monkey mind. That's I was like, it. Oh, my mind is not, my mind is not just, a, my mind is the drunk monkey. My mind's wasted. It's completely insane. It's belligerent. And it's stuck ever since. I mean, literally since 1991, uh, I have been uh, stuck with the uh, grammatically incorrect version, the drunk monkey. It should be the drunken monkey, but there you go. Dude, I love it, man. That's how it all started. I wanted to, I wanted to um, f um, sweep back, though, on this idea. You said um, it was very flattering uh, that you said, you know, like, where, where do you see it all going? Where, you know, wh where is this, um, you know, where, where is real estate going? And I, I don't really know if I'm that connected to the real estate industry specifically. Uh, I, about 15 years ago, I began working in a wide variety of industries. And, you know, of course I have roots in real estate because of my family ties. But one of the things that I see people are doing more and more and more now, and they're not quite admitting it, is they're, they're seeking to go into the highest states of consciousness. They're, okay. they're, they're seeking to go into these states of like profound, um, stoked, profound, lit up, profound, energize right it's like um if i'm a real estate agent uh, i want to be i want to be in my business every day and just like yes right just oh feeling that <laughs> energy and that energy really when you boil it all the way down you're like look where's the source of that where is the information that talks about that that energy really is the energy of enlightenment that's the thing that most people oh. are going after and you know that's not a religious thing right i mean you could you could be a buddhist or an atheist or a christian or whatever and and be into enlightenment the same way you could be into pizza it's just a it's just a preference you you want to feel good that's an enlightened state that's what it's called okay so that's, that's what you mean by 
that's the trend that I see that we're all moving towards. It's not just about grinding and um, destroying yourself in the process. It's about feeling so good you can't even stand it. You have tears of joy in your eyes. Oh, man. So here, one of the things that I learned from, from coaching with you and just talking to you was, was how important it really was to, to just take a huge, huge rewind and be like, hey, look, for all these years, you've been doing this this way. And it's time to take a moment and realize that you've kind of been approaching it the wrong way. And so you helped me take a lot of these things that were just sitting there, a lot of these limiting, I guess, beliefs that I had and really helped me change my mindset. And I'm really thankful for that. So I'm going to ask you if I wanted to change my mindset right now for everybody watching out there, who's going to watch in the future. Yeah. What would be the first thing that I could do? You got to implement the game changer process. And if you put up that slide, it'll sort of help drive it home. Mm -hmm. um, the game changer process is a part of my methodology. Um, I have a methodology called the rapid enlightenment process. And um, the game changer is really one of the first things that you got to do to change your mindset. So awareness makes you flexible, which reveals new options, and that makes you powerful. So it's kind of like this. If when you and I were working with each other, I started to point things out to you that were destructive. You and I were, were in this process. You're like, Matthew, I'm overwhelmed and I'm, I'm, having, um, you know, I'm, I'm having troubles with just all the stuff that I'm accountable to. It's really like uh, driving me crazy. How, yeah. do I, how do I feel good again? And what we became aware of was that there was an underlying agenda that the drunk monkey had. And the drunk monkey wanted to be liked. It yeah. wanted fit in. It wanted people to think that you were important. It, it wanted to feel like you were a lovable character. True. And, and by becoming aware of that, all of a sudden, you, it's sort of like if I said, hey, Tristan, um, see that gun that you have in your hand? I don't know if my, if my screen is up. Seems like my slide is still showing on the, on the thing. But it's like this. You know, I said, Tristan, you have a gun in your hand. And you keep shooting yourself in the foot. And you're like, what? I don't have a gun in my hand. And I was like, no, Tristan, look, there's a gun right there. And you're like, holy smokes, Matthew. I just thought I had a bloody foot and that I couldn't walk and that I was debilitated. And I was like, no, bro. The drunk monkey wants you to look good. It wants you to fit in. It wants you to try and, and be significant and be somebody. And because you, do, because you have that underlying agenda – you're constantly saying yes to things that you shouldn't. You're constantly trying to take on too much. You're constantly trying to be important rather than be effective. And you were like, oh, right? Immediately you saw there's the gun and now that makes you flexible. So it, re it revealed new options. All the I didn't have to give you new options. I didn't even have to coach you if, you're being, if we're being honest. All I had to do was reveal to you there's an underlying framework that you have going on that is, that is misaligned with your agenda. It revealed new options. All the, I didn't have to give you new I didn't have to give you any new options. All that happened was you saw new options and boom, your power exploded. And, you know, I, I, I'm, you, you and I haven't been coaching for a while now, but, you know, when we stopped, you were on the massive upward trajectory in every category of your life. It was yeah. your and it, and it continued thanks to you opening my eyes. So how would an agent be able to see that? I mean, how, how do they take a step back and say, how do they become aware? Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some of the functionality of the drunk monkey. So this would be like a little teaching moment. Can I do a, a teaching moment for everybody right now? Let's do it, man. Okay, good. So the drunk monkey... Um, the drunk monkey is just that negative self-talk in your head. It's like the, the uninvited unwanted, um, you know, fragments of news conversations or, you know, it's like the intrusions on your focus. You know, you're, <clears throat> you're driving home and, and you're literally fantasizing in advance about how you're going to defend yourself against your wife before you even get there. Like you're in anxiety. You haven't <laughs> even gotten home. 
You know what I mean? You're not yeah. even home. You're like freaking out in your head, blah, 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 right? The body is fighting. You're having a battle, but no battle has even occurred, right? That's the drunk monkey. The drunk monkey is the thing that um, you know you uh, you go to pick up the phone, and it's like your hand reaches for the phone, and all of a sudden you're like, but I should check Facebook first, you know? And you're just it, it just pulls you and distracts you. That's the drunk monkey, Makes sense. and it's a survival system and it's a good one. And you want that survival system. You just don't want that survival system running the show. You don't want it. You don't want it running your business because if it does, you're not going to make a lot of money. You're going to be unhappy. And if you do make a lot of money, you're going to be falling apart at the seams. You're going to be stressed in your body. You're going to, you're going to have to like work out and eat right to the extreme in order to contradict the amount of negativity that the drunk monkey will create. So it has what I call unconscious reflexes. And these unconscious reflexes are something called mindset malfunctions. And they're malfunctions because it's like old stuff, you know, like Tristan, you didn't need to be a lovable character. You already were a lovable character. So this constant trying to be lovable, to be appreciated, to be honored, the trying itself actually diminished you. It was old information. It was a mindset malfunction. So it's, these are, the unconscious reflexes are mindset malfunctions that keep you from getting the results that you want in life. And the first one is insidious, and it's called forecasting the negative. Put up that slide of the funny um, psychic drunk monkey so they can see that. You know, forecasting the negative, the drunk monkey actually thinks it's psychic. It thinks it can tell the future. So you'll notice like you're driving over to a for sale by owner, for example, mm. and the drunk monkey literally is telling you what's going to happen. Like it knows. And you and I both know that the drunk monkey is completely full of it. It has no idea, but that's actually a very important functionality for survival. The drunk monkey wants to figure out what's going to happen in the future so that you can try to avoid things that will be harmful to you. But, you know, come on, bro. Calling it for sale by owner is not harmful. It's not dangerous. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the drunk monkey is outdated. It's a survival system. And if you can begin to see it, that's step one is to see it. If you can begin to see it, you can begin to control it. That's step two. And if you can begin to control it, you can transcend it. That's step three. That's the enlightened state. And really what I'm committed to is assisting people in having enlightened prosperity, free from the negativity, free from the, the destruction of the mind, free from the burden and the stress and all of that, yet kicking ass and having a, having a blast in life. So forecasting the negative, that's one of the unconscious reflexes. Desire to fit in, brutal. You and I, we don't even know that we're putting on a show in an effort to try and convince the people around us that we're relevant, that we're important, they should, they should appreciate us and respect us. And we don't understand, we never even examined well, why do I want to be relevant, important, be appreciated, be respected? Why? And the answer is actually because when your ancestors were tribal, if you weren't appreciated, respected, honored, etc., then you would actually be in danger. They might leave you out. You might get left behind. You might not get the food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's this encoding that we have that is actually standing in the way because you won't take action in your business if you think the action will threaten looking good and being a member of good standing in your community. This is why so many people won't do cold calls because Got it. You're right. The idea is that a person to make cold calls is a is a intruding, you know, low life con artist. Right. That's the that's the implication. It's not true, but that's what's implied. And then the real estate agent has a drunk monkey that says, oh, my God, I can't be that if I want to maintain good standing in my community. If I don't maintain good standing in my community, there's all these unconscious motives that they don't even recognize. And therefore, they don't do the things that drive the growth of their business forward because you're going to have to do things that conflict with how your mommy raised you. 
Sorry. That makes let's, a lot of sense, man. Let's show them slide four, okay? All right. Here we this go. Is just my, this is my short little teaching moment here, okay? All so right. slide four is uh, another unconscious reflex, and that's holding people accountable to agreements that they never made. The, the drunk monkey literally gets upset with other realtors, with your clients. It gets upset with your spouse. It gets upset with your assistant or um, the broker. And it gets upset because your expectations get broken. And the drunk monkey believes that the rules it was taught as a child are the right rules. So you, you go around thinking, you know, the Tristan way of operating is the right way and the Matthew way of operating is the wrong way. And when Matthew behaves normally, it pisses off Tristan. And that right there, like, let's just be honest here. Tristan, the world doesn't care what you think. Nobody cares. Your broker doesn't care what you think. Your clients don't care what you think. Other agents don't care what you think. The mortgage brokers, the title reps, the, nobody cares. But we go around, we get activated, and we get triggered constantly because we're blind to a system of thinking that was important when you were a monkey, a tribal person. And we got to let that stuff go. Got it. So what do you think it's tied to now, Matthew? I mean, what? do you think it's tied to some of our expectations that, that we just have as, as we're growing up? Or You and I are domesticated like dogs. Pee over here. Poop right there. Wear these clothes. Walk like this. Mm -hmm. We get trained through, uh, through conditioning, through pain and pleasure, through r risks and rewards, through love withheld, love given. We get trained, right? Like, you have to sit like this at the table. And when we're at the table, we only do it this way. And when you're in public, you must behave in this way, right? And, and all of that is incredibly important until you become the creator of your own life experience, which is basically what a realtor is. A realtor is someone who said, I'm going to, I'm going to forge my own path. But how your parents trained you isn't necessarily congruent with being a successful real estate agent. And if you don't have the consciousness, if you can't see it, then you're going to be stuck. You're going to be experiencing what I call the success paradox, which is unconscious resistance to doing what needs to be done to succeed. Can you repeat that? The success paradox is unconscious. I think we might have a slide for that, don't we? I don't oh, know. Let me see. Let me see. No, I don't think we do. Unconscious resistance. So it's unconscious resistance to, the, to doing what needs to be done. Your desire for success is met with unconscious resistance. And, and that's what these unconscious reflexes do. So forecasting the negative, it's a part of the system that keeps you down. Desire to fit in, that's part of the system that, that limits your behavior. Holding other people accountable to agreements that they didn't make, that's part of the system that has you go into negative states when the world's just doing what they're doing. People are just doing what they're doing, but you're, you're feeling uncomfortable or feeling uneasy, et cetera. So you're saying people are doing what they're doing, but it's our interpretation whether it's good or bad. Yeah, there is no good or bad. All good and all bad is a figment of your imagination. Now, there are things that are constructive, and there are things that are destructive. There are things that function, and there are things that malfunction. They don't work. There, there's workability in life. There's unworkability in life. That that we can prove all that stuff, but right and wrong, that's a figment of your imagination, but you don't live like it's a figment of your imagination. You, you live like, you know, and that's arrogant. And part of going into enlightened states is recognizing just what an arrogant person you are. That's part, you have to admit it. You have to go, I am an arrogant, judgmental person. I pretend like my perspective about life is true. And because I have this, this unconscious fixed idea about reality, I'm constantly disrupted. I feel sort of like this. Tristan, do you ever feel frustration? Yes. 
That's because you have a fixed reality that isn't true and life doesn't care. So it does whatever it wants and then you get upset. Do you ever feel anger? Yes. Fixed reality. Do you ever feel sadness? Yes. Fixed reality. Do you ever feel like um, you are fighting against life and the forces out there in the world? I used to. Yeah, we worked on that one a lot, didn't we? Yeah, you helped me. But if, if you feel any of those things, anger, upset, frustration, annoyance, doubt, uncertainty, every one of those things just tells you that your brainstem has been activated, you're in survival mode, and life has now contradicted your opinion. And if, if, if that happens, then you're just not going to be high functioning. We know Sean um, Aker did a, a ton of research at Harvard, and he showed, it, it, they did studies. They basically helped people to get into a happy state and then do activities. And then they helped people be in a neutral state and do activities, help people to be in an upset state and do activities. And what they found was people who were in happy states literally, you know, double, triple, quadruple the productivity, the resourcefulness, the creativity, the exactness people who were, over people who are neutral or upset. So happiness is one of the most productive, powerful things that you can take on in your business. You'll prospect better. You'll close better. You'll build rapport better. You'll be a better negotiator. You'll be more effective at getting the deals done. You'll be more patient with putting systems in place. Happiness is the whole deal. Tristan, you apply that on top of everything you do, everything's going to get better. So how, how does somebody get there, man? Well, you have to, number one, see that you are forecasting the negative and choose something else. You have to see that you are committed to trying to fit in and look good and, and choose something else. You have to see that you're holding others accountable to agreements they didn't make. And then you have to stop avoiding making the same mistake twice and recognize that success is a series of well-managed breakdowns and embrace the learning process, which is make up a story. I think that if I do this activity, I'll make more money. Now, it's still a story because maybe Tristan exposes me to a, a thought leader in the real estate space. Mm -hmm. And that thought leader says, this worked for me. I did these actions and then I got more sales. Well, just because that thought leader says it doesn't mean that it's tr true for everybody, okay? And um, that is definitely one of the fallacies in this business is that uh, we think that a thought leader will tell you um, what is predictable. A thought leader will tell you what is probable, not what is predictable. Why it's mm -hmm. only probable for you is you still have to get yourself to do it. And you have to not suck while doing it. So, th <laughs> so that means you take this hypothesis. So Tristan says, do these things and you'll make more money. One, two, three. So then me, the agent, I go, okay, I have this hypothesis. One, two, three. So then I take the action and I suck. I don't know how to do it. I'm, I don't have any power in that. It's not what I normally do. It's not my, it's not my um, normal way of operating, right? There's a lot of stuff that's getting in the way. I'm, I'm doubtful. I'm fearful. I'm fretful. That diminishes my abilities. And I don't get the results that I want. Well, then the next thing to do is to assess what happened, step back and look at, okay, well, what needs to be tweaked to have my hypothesis come true? But that's not how we operate. That's, that's just called the learning process. That's the scientific um, process. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that. Our, the drunk monkey literally says, I went over, I pet a dog, the dog bit me. Therefore... All dogs bite. Yeah. So I go and do the things. Tristan says, hey, guys, you want to make more money? Do one, two, three. So me, the agent, I go, Tristan said one, two, three. I'm going to go try it. I go try it. I suck. I, it doesn't work for me because there's like 78 other things that need to be worked out for these things to occur. But I don't try it again because I go over. I do the thing, it doesn't work for me. My brain says, don't make the same mistake twice. And the reason being is it's a survival system. If I'm, if I'm walking in the jungle with my buddy Tristan and all of a sudden we hear a sound and then a tiger jumps out and grabs my buddy Tristan, drags him away and kills him, my brain says, don't make the same mistake twice. Next time you hear rustling, you better run like hell. <laughs> 
Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's built oh. into my system. It makes so total sense. I call it for sale by owner. That for sale by owner says, I said no soliciting, you jackass. Quit calling me. Ah, right? <laughs> Adrenaline spikes through my whole system. Now, yes. Kristen says, hey, guys, there's this really cool thing that I'm doing. You should do it too. One, two, three. My brain goes one, two, three. Last time I did one, I got yelled at. I'm not doing that again. So we have this thing called don't make the same mistake twice, which is a mindset malfunction. And then got we it. have following the rules that don't exist and avoiding failure. So those are your mindset malfunctions, your unconscious reflexes. No, right. Matthew, you know, teaching moment, com teaching moment complete. That was a good one. I think what's standing out for me right now is following rules that don't exist only because I'm dealing with that with my daughter. She's 11 years old. So I I'm seeing that very clearly. I know we spoke about this before, but now it's like, it's right there in my face and I'm really help, trying. Help me, un help me understand the rule you're following that doesn't exist. Personally? So, yeah. What is, what is the rule that has you stuck? The rule that has me stuck. Um, I think it goes back to, to very, my rudimentary uh, upbringing, which is, you know, your parents tell you to do certain things because society expects those things of you. Right. So yeah. I'm still, I still struggle with that, you know, be a certain way, uh, say certain things because people expect it. It took me a long time to shift over to, to dressing like how I dress, right? Yeah. Which is with a t-shirt and jeans. Me too. Uh, because for a long time I was wearing a suit and it just wasn't me. It's just, right. I was living somebody else's standards. Um, so you know, I, I still deal with the, the whole rudimentary part of it, which is be like what people want you to be. Yeah, I do too. But, um, you know, in regards to, to real estate, um, I think we come across a lot of agents that way that they think that they're supposed to do something a certain way. And then it causes everyone a headache because, you know, that's really their way of doing it, not, not everybody else's way. Um, question for you. A lot of times we focus on business goals, right? Like we talked at the very beginning, everyone talks about my goal is to get to a hundred thousand or close 50 deals in a year, uh, whatever it is. We focus on these business goals and systems, but, but you, you focus on changing the mind, right? And, and starting there. How do you think that affects everything else? Well, one thing that I want you to consider is um, I don't I don't spend any time with um, new people in any industry, whether it's uh, Wall Street or real estate or um, development or whatever, right? Insurance. I don't spend time with new people. Uh, you need to have a certain skill set down to be effective at business and you set business goals because that's the right thing to do. Uh, but then what you find is you set the business goals and it's literally, you set some version of the same goal every year and you literally feel like a failure over and over and over, or you feel like, Oh my God, how am I going to do it again? I have no idea how that happened. Right. There's all these fears and concerns. And what I found is at some point you have to rise above uh, just setting goals that are baseline, like I'm going to make 50 deals, um, and you have to say, this is the person I'm going to become. Because the person that I'm going to become, when I become that person, then it's natural for me to do 50, 75, 100, 150 deals. And becoming someone is about changing your mindset. So uh, here's the deal. Mindset is literally the one change that changes everything, Tristan. If you change the way that you see things, everything will change. If, 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 for example, at one point in the world, we thought that the world was flat. So what that had us do is we only took our ships. We would never go too far away from the shore and mm -hmm. it limited our expression here on earth. And it, when we learned that the world was round, suddenly we have the new ability. We, we were freed. Even we were freed, even though nothing had changed, nothing changed, but we became free. 
we became free because of information. And that's what I do. My job is to awaken. My job is to assist people in seeing that the limitations that you have are a lie. Who you think you are is a lie. The rules you follow are a lie. You've been lied to. You're lying to yourself and you're propagating those lies. And that is a foundational principle of being an enlightened being. It is literally rising above the cultural dogma and limitations, rising above the illogical rules that don't have anything to do with your life so that you can be the person that you want to be. And when you go into those states, your mind goes completely quiet. Your intuition becomes incredibly loud. Your creativity, your resourcefulness. You literally have tears of joy. Earlier today, I was preparing for this, and I literally had this moment where I had a, a rush of joy take over my whole body, and I just I, I literally holding back the tears. It felt so good just to be alive. And all I was doing was sitting here on my computer. <laughs> I don't know about you. I Give me that. more of that. That's I want that. more of that when I'm working. Bottle that up, man. Bottle it up. Well, that's what I, that's, that's what I do. That's my goal. My goal, because when you're in that state and you call an expired, bam, you will slay it. If you're in that state and you go on a listing presentation, they're going to be like, I don't know what's going on with you, but I just want more. You know what? That's so true. I've been in that state before where I go and do a presentation or I'm with a client. It's like everything is perfect. Everything's succinct. You just go. Whoosh. Yeah. It makes sense. So awesome. then let me go into the next question, which is. Okay it's perfect for this because we just talked about a little bit about this. Do you think that the coaching industry for real estate is a little faulty? And I mean, you know, are the coaches really focusing on what matters for agents? Because you just said, you just told me what matters. So what do you think? Um, no, I don't think it's faulty at all. I mean, my brother and my father and I founded the real estate coaching industry in the early 90s. Um, it works. It, it works. You sign up for my dad's coaching or my brother's coaching, it's going to work for you, okay? But the thing that I found for, for me was in 1999, I had been coaching and coaching and coaching. So I started coaching in 1993. Um, we, we created like a formal coaching program in 1996 uh, at the Mike Ferry organization. And by 1999, I was confronted, Tristan, confronted. I was teaching people exactly what they needed to do to make money, Okay, but they weren't doing it. We get on the phone and they'd be like, I tried and then I got distracted and then I'm going, I had to get this deal done and then the seller called and then I just, I, I wanted to call, but then I don't know, I looked at the number and I got a heart attack in the moment. And so I I had to go to the bathroom and then my broker came in and I, had to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. actions that would create money were somehow being blocked. And I was confronted with what I started to call the success paradox. And you and I uh, already talked about this a little bit, but it's really your desire for success is met with unconscious resistance. And it was then that I said, I can't, I can't in good faith continue on the path of teaching people what to do and having them pay me the money and then they don't do it. It was, it lacked integrity for me personally as a coach. And so I split off at that time and started to look at, well, what were the, what were the fundamental things in the mind that was blocking someone? And my methodology really came out of, um, it was like a life and death struggle. I mean, I had um, at times like back then, hmm. I would be coaching a hundred people a week, Tristan. Whoa. And maybe three or four were doing what they were supposed to be doing. So hold on, even those three or four that were doing what they're supposed to be doing, I'm sure they weren't even doing it exactly, right? They were doing like 80% in comparison yeah. to. Yeah, but I think, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to get to 100% because um, when we say you're supposed to be, that's actually a made-up story. We don't know 
what will actually work. The future is completely unknown. We're literally shining our flashlight into the darkness to see what's there and then moving forward. That darkness is the future and we can only see it from the present. So in this present moment, we look into the future and we prophesize about what might be happening. We use our, our gut, our intuition. We use this powerful tool of the drunk monkey to our advantage. And then we take action, hoping that we can produce the result that we see. But the, the world is almost never what we thought. So there, you have to have this tremendous flexibility. And the flexibility is almost impossible if you're following rules that don't exist, if you're holding people accountable to, um, to rules that they didn't even sign up for, if you think that you're right about things, you're gonna fail massively. You have to like say, this is what will be, so you have to be declarative, right? This is what will be. There's a, there's a form of that that is like, I'm right. But you also say, this is what will be, and then you're a scientist, and you you fail, 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 fail. And then when you start to get close, you go, oh, it's not exactly like that. It's it's more like this over here. So you have to have the mindset in order to have the flexibility necessary to turn yourself from the person that was raised by your parents into your version of a successful agent and your version will be totally different than everybody else's. So you take my dad's system and you'll, you'll do it your way. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. And look, I, I coached with your dad for probably two years and, and it did take me from one level to a whole nother level, which is amazing. Then I coached with your brother and it did the same thing. So I think they were just stepping stones. Uh, at least that's the way I saw it. And, well, you, you, here's the deal, dude. You can't do you can't do anything. So you can't do Keller Williams coaching if it's not congruent with who you are. You can't do Mike's coaching or Tom's coaching or Brian Buffini's coaching or anybody's coaching, right? Uh, you can't actually take the coaching unless you have the system for examining what is going on in my thinking process and my biology and is it congruent with what I want? It's sort of like this, okay? Here's the three stages. One, you must become aware of the drunk monkey and its functioning. Two, you must begin to take control of the drunk monkey. And then three, you must transcend the drunk monkey and go into enlightened states. This is the rapid enlightenment process right here. So aware, control, transcend. Aware, control, transcend. Okay, you, you've told me before, and I see it here, enlightenment is very, very practical. Can you, can you explain that to sure. me, please? You bet. Um, well, so a lot of people think of enlightenment like Buddhism or something like that. And, and uh, actually, the term got borrowed. Uh, it wasn't actually assigned to any religion before, just so you know. It actually was a, it was originally about a uh, an awakening that was occurring in the 1700s for people. But um, the enlightenment that we all think about today is like illumination, right? To to see more. So enlightenment really it, it includes two things: you can see things that other people can't see, and you can accept the things that you see. So if you can see things, then you can make moves that other people can't make. And if you can accept the stuff that you see, then you don't have reaction, which gives you creativity and, and responsiveness. So that is incredibly powerful because let's say you're in the middle of a, a putting together a new system and that new system includes something like uh, you send out a mailer, uh, then a call comes in, then you have a call center um, call and qualify. I am warm them up and then they pass them over to you. And then the way they pass them over to you, there's like malfunctioning that's occurring, right? They're passing it over to you and you're blaming the call center, right? <laughs> totally normal, right? You don't take responsibility, but in enlightenment, you go like, it's not the call center. The call isn't working because I suck. <laughs> to see that you suck, to see that you are crappy at communicating is at the height of awareness and responsibility. It's profound because now the moment you go like the call, so the mailer worked, 
I got the call. The call center's warming them up. They're passing them over to me. Now it's on me. Now, what's the transformation that I can make inside of myself? So you can see what's going on inside of you and you can accept what's happening. You accept that you aren't good. You accept you don't know what's happening. You, don't ex you accept that you aren't being effective. You aren't converting. And it, because you can accept it, you go, huh, I wonder what I can do about it. That's unbelievably practical. I see Being what you're saying. Non-reactive, that's unbelievable, un unbelievably practical. Uh, being able to avoid going into apathy and upset and breakdown and, you know, like being able to avoid going home and sitting on the couch and eating ice cream to go unconscious because you're so upset about how bad your business is and what a loser you are like being able to avoid that <laughs> that's unbelievably practical because that right there that ice cream that time of lamenting and what's wrong with me and i'm never going to succeed and other people are better than me that time of lamenting that could take weeks to to recover from and those weeks literally your bank account is drowning it's just it's siphoning off the dollars. I mean, it's unbelievably practical to take on the process of being an enlightened person. Well, Matthew, we, as agents and probably as any, any field, we, we sometimes get into a state of, of like sadness, depression, maybe just like a, 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 a slump. Yeah. How, how can you, or what do you suggest we can do to snap out of it? Because sometimes I see agents, they just go into it for months. And how can somebody prevent it and snap out of it quickly? Well, there's a, like a, there's a, um, it's all, so there's, there's techniques that are um, enlightened techniques. And then there are techniques that are pre-enlightened and pre-enlightened tends to be in the realm of um, personal development. And um, what I had to do is I had to transcend personal development because I had gone to all the seminars and done all the stuff. And, uh, and I still was finding myself miserable at times and going into states of apathy and, you know, feeling um, down and depressed. But mm -hmm. there, was one t there was one idea that I took from the realm of the personal development that has always really worked for me. And I want to share it. It's called the 10-10 visualization. And the 10-10 visualization was something that I invented, I don't know, maybe 1999. And um, I created it because at the time, I was really studying uh, Jerry and Esther Hicks methodology and I was trying to wrap my head around this and really get it to be practical. And here's, wh here's what we, we would do. I'd get agents on the phone and they would just be like, I suck. I'm never going to do a deal again. <laughs> Things aren't working for me. It works for everybody else. I don't even know why I'm in this business, right? That, that, almost always when I got clients, that's where they were. Um, at the Mike Ferry organization, my job was sort of the turnaround coach. So, uh, like, they they always gave me people who like were into breakdown, and my job was to get them down into breakthrough. And the very first thing I'd have them do is I'd have them make a list of ten things that they actually appreciated about their life and business, like a you know a gratitude list, an appreciation list. And uh, so 10, that's, that's really important. Then I'd ma have them make a list and we would do it together. I'd say, okay, let's, let's write out 10 things like if life was better than it is now, if, it, if, if life was improving, what would be there? And I would generally have them say, well, you know, what are you unhappy about? Okay, well, what would make you happy, right? And then we would write down the things that would make them happy. And so we'd have these two lists, 10 things that they appreciate, that they're happy about. So it's sort of like, this list, life is already good. And then over here, if life was getting better, it would be this. And then what I'd have them do is every night before they went to bed, I would just say, I just want you to have these lists on two sides of a piece of paper. And before you go to bed, I, all I want you to do is just review the list of things you're grateful for, review the list of things that, that you want life to be, close your eyes, and then just get present. Think about all the things you're grateful for. Think about all the things that, that you want life to be. So it's a, an unbelievably simple and practical, you know, personal development type technique to use. It's not an enlightenment technique. It's a personal development technique. But my God, 
it will blow you away what happens. If you're in a little bit of a slump, you do the 10-10 visualization for, you know, a good five, six days in a row. You, it's literally, it will totally turn around your attitude. The, the drunk monkey focuses on whatever you focus it on. And there was a Harvard study that was done um, with, your, with iPhones. They made an app. And they had people log the activity that they were doing and then what the mind was thinking. And they literally received hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of logs from, from these you know, tens of thousands of people all over the world. Right. <clears throat> and the thing that shocked the scientists is that the mind, when idle, defaults to the negative. And Whoa. this is the issue that we have in the control phase. So first you have to become aware of that your mind is not your friend, that the drunk monkey is literally a biological system. That's step one. Step two is you have to start to conduct or utilize the tool of the drunk monkey. And that means that you point the drunk monkey in the direction that you want to go. Then the next phase after that is that you actually transcend the need for the drunk monkey and you go into a state of pervasive peace and profound trust. And that's where the drunk monkey disappears and no longer talks to you. Those three phases are critical. And the 1010 visualization fits in that second phase where you start to take control of the way that the mind is focusing. 10 things that you appreciate and like about your life, 10 things that you want to create that you want if life was better. You put them on two pieces, uh, one piece of paper either side. You read both lists before you go to bed. You close your eyes, and as you're drifting off to sleep, you just think about all the things you're grateful for and all the ways you want your life to be. And then literally within five days, it will change your trajectory of your, of your emotional self. Your mood will get so much better. I'm typing it at the bottom of the notes here because that was awesome. I have a I, I have a blog post and a video too, so I'll, I'll um, just send what's a, later. Okay. Where, where can we go to to go to your blog? If you go to MatthewFerry.com, you can get straight to my blog. Just M A T T H E W F E R R Y dot com. MatthewFerry dot com. Perfect. All right, we've got a few minutes. I wanted to touch on. I had two questions actually. Okay. And one of them is says. Ask him, this is on Facebook. Oh, okay. Ask cool. him about the $69 program. Uh, what's that, Matthew? Oh, well, so that's like, uh, you know, hey, thanks. That's like a setup for me to uh, sell my stuff. I like that. Yeah. Um, I have a, uh, basically, I have a, a system that I've put together that assists people to um, how to go into a quiet mind state. And it's power, profit, and peace of mind. Those are my three objectives. I want to assist you in experiencing personal power. I want you to ramp up your profit-making um, activities, and I want you to experience pervasive peace of mind. So it's called P3, power, profit, and peace of mind. And if people actually go to matthewferry.com forward slash P3, just the letter P mm -hmm. and the number three, um, if they go there, then they can see all about it. I've actually put some of my trainings on the outside. They can actually do some of my training right now for free. Um, and if they want, they can sign up for 15 days or 14 days for a dollar just to test it all out, see if it works for them. And then if they want to continue with my training at 69 a month, and I have, you know, probably 25, 30 training programs in there to get your mind to go quiet and your inspiration to to come about. So Matthew, thank you. The, Thanks for whoever wrote that. Thank you. That was really, that was really sweet. That's the P3 Academy. Is that what it is? Cause I'm uh -huh. looking at yeah. it right now. Yeah. Matthewfairy.com forward slash P3. Perfect. I got something. I mean, if people want to just go in <laughs> and so first of all, you can do some free training there, but I also have a great training um, in written form and it's called seven steps to happiness and success. And that's just right on the homepage, Matthewfairy.com. So if you go on there, Seven Steps to Happiness and Success, you can download my free PDF. And it's seven very specific things. If you're feeling some breakdown, if you're feeling some, um, like you don't have the, the chutzpah, the joy, the pep in your step, right? I mean, if you're not feeling like the, woo, if you don't have that feeling, do those seven steps. Yeah, it'll blow your mind. You will, your inspiration and energy will come back. Yeah, man, those seven, those that was the 10, what was that? 10, 10 visualization, right? That's in there. Yeah, that's in there. All that's right, perfect. Steps. And then you have one slide that 
that you have here. It's called Seven Steps to Happiness and Success. I'm going to share that right here. So oh, okay, people- yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at my screen over here to okay, let me get see, that if, over see here. if it goes up there. Here's, here's what I think we're faced with, okay? So yeah. achieving success in real estate is the same as achieving success in any other business. You have to identify a problem that you're going to solve. You have to um, create a system to promote the problem. So your problem that you're solving is helping people get their home sold or helping them buy a home or helping them invest in real estate, right? So then- yeah. You have, to, you have to do the same thing that everybody else does, right? Which is you have to create a system to promote that to people. You have to create a lead conversion system. You have to create an effective sales presentation. You have to um, utilize or, or work on your efficiency on the back-end system to complete the sale and make the customer happy. It's the same for everybody. And every, I have to do the same thing you do. My business is the same. I've identified a problem. People want success because they think it'll make them happy and it's, it never works. They get success and they're still miserable. So then what I do is I teach people to get happy now, which then makes success a lot easier. So happy to, happiness doesn't make you successful. Happiness just makes success easier to do because then you'll do all those things that currently make you miserable, but you can do them with a smile on your face and feel good. So I have the same thing, right? I, have to, I had to identify that problem. Then I had to create a system for promoting it. Then I had to create a lead conversion system. Then I had to create an effective sales presentation. Then I had to create an effective backend system to make sure that my customers were happy. You have to do that same thing. Yeah. Here's the problem. Getting yourself to do it. That's the problem. Wait, wait, wait. Is that, is that the most common issue that agents have? Getting, is that, that's number one. Yeah, that's what I thought. That answered that actually answered somebody else's question, which is perfect. Number one. There is there is nothing, nothing that stops agents more than that inner limitation. The thing that's like, ooh, you know, this little feeling where you go like, ugh. You know, it's like Tristan goes, Yeah, this morning I called 15 expired listings, right? And literally when he says that, you go, ah. there's a feeling inside, right? <laughs> You don't learn how to control that, forget about it. And, you know, look, I went and did all the training. I went and did every, I became an NLP master. I worked on every aspect of controlling my physiology and my psychology and my nervous system. And I did all of it. And what I found was that there was a a whole other level. Like if you don't learn to control the context that you see the world through, like if you don't learn to adjust your worldview, your physiology will not ultimately change. So you can, you can work to um, condition yourself not to feel a negative feeling about expireds, but in the end, it'll come back, right? Because that's only the effect. That's the effect. The cause is what enlightened states address. You have to use enlightenment to Im- impact the cause, and then your whole physiology, attitude, everything changes, and then you can do what you need to do to make money in real estate. Makes sense, man, it makes sense. I was doing a, a, a little short video for you on Insta Live here as well. Mm. So that was good. And awesome. let's see what other questions we had. Um, Somebody says you must be Buddhist. <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's so funny. Um, uh, apparently, so much of what I talk about has a, uh, a Buddhist um, thing. You know, Buddhism, the Buddhists hijacked the word enlightenment. Enlightenment actually was a term that was uh, um, created to describe a, um, a cultural awakening and revolution that occurred in the 1700s that had nothing to do with religion. It had to do with information and understanding. And then the Buddhists um, snagged that term and used it for their own thing. So when I talk about enlightenment, I'm talking about actual enlightenment, which is the awakening of information. Um, and uh, I'm not a Buddhist or uh, I'm not anything, actually. I, I appreciate all of them. Um, but uh, I, I just want to be happy and kick ass. That's, <laughs> That's what you know, I want. 
just want to be happy and kick ass. That's what I want to do in my life. And um, what I found is, uh, you know, I worked on manipulating my nervous system and that kind of worked. Uh, then I worked on tweaking my psychology and that kind of worked. And then I worked on like emotional release and did like went to emotional um, things and that kind of worked. And then I like did a, this whole like realm of spiritual healers and things like that. And that kind of worked. And then I went like back to my roots and like read about Jesus and that kind of worked. And then I went back and like read some of the other religions and some of that kind of worked too. But ultimately in the end, what worked was transcending the malfunctions that were going on in my mind. That's what worked. And as soon as I did that, boom, my happiness became guaranteed. My happiness became guaranteed. My ability, my flexibility became unshakable like i could go i could be in any situation nothing would take me off my game doesn't mean i don't have down moments i i have down moments okay and it doesn't mean that the world doesn't suck the world has all kinds of sucky stuff happening yeah just at my ability to deal with the suckiness that's happening is top notch i don't i don't get taken off by that stuff and um what it's done is it's made me work less it's made me enjoy more. It's made me slow down and spend more time with my kids. It's made me um, um, become a man who is like obsessed with keeping my word and, and making sure that what I say uh, is congruent and doesn't create negativity inside of me. It's, it's, it's crazy what happens. So a couple of people want to know if you have events that we can go to and listen to you live. I'm actually, it's so interesting, you know, for a long time, I, you know, I was on the road for 16 years. Uh, wow. And, yeah, a long time from about 1991, I was on the road. Uh, and then I took about five years off. And I decided at the beginning of this year that I wanted to get back out there. Um, because there's, there's a couple of parts of my methodology that I found for some reason I have to be face to face with the group. I'm not able to comp to have the mind go completely silent for some reason. I, I haven't figured out why, um, unless I'm face to face. So this year I started doing live events again. I did my first one back in March, and I'm going to do my second one coming up this next March. And it, um, you can go to my website and I probably the best thing to do is just to get on my list. If you, if you download the seven steps, mm -hmm. uh, then we'll tell you about the things that we have coming up. And, and um, you know, generally uh, we do, uh, we're going to do, you know, one or two, maybe three events a year kind of thing. Awesome. Okay. March, where at? Uh, it'll be in Orange County. I don't, you know, I don't want to travel that much. So I, <laughs> you I'm, live there. I live in Orange County. I don't want to travel that much. So it's just going to be down the street. It'll be uh, at the Hilton Hotel right by the airport. So Awesome, buddy. I'm going to I'll post that up. Anything you want to add as we close? As we close, um, well, I want to say it in this way, that en enlightenment is really the recognition that the source of life in you is the source of life in everyone and everything. And that we are all just one thing expressing itself uh, with infinite variety. And when you connect with that, your fear disappears. And when your fear disappears, your creativity explodes. Your joy overwhelms you. You literally walk around in the world and you're, you're dumbstruck by the beauty that you experience. And uh, I think that that's unbelievably effective when you're talking to a for sale by owner. If you are completely in a state of oneness with that person and you know they are you, you are them, the stuff that makes you is the stuff that makes them, um, then they're not so scary. And you are able to just be completely authentic with them. And you may help them, you may not help them, but um, you will be detached. And that detachment will give you unbelievable amounts of peace and flow. And what I found is, is when people are in peace and flow and they're doing their business, they, they make more money. It's more effortless. And that would be my goal for people. I love it, man. It, I, I think we should do a part two to this. This was Let's do so it. Yeah, good. I'd love to. It'd be fun. All right. Let's, let's put it in the books. Um, what do you think, November or December? What's good for oh, you? Oh, God. I don't know. Let's get offline and do it. We won't bore anybody else with it. <laughs> okay. thanks, for, thanks for listening, everybody. I appreciate you. And uh, uh, hopefully some of the things that I said today made a difference. Thanks, Matthew. I appreciate it. Remember, find him at MatthewFerry.com. And... Be happy and kick ass. Do it.